This is rumor control. Shortly after 0500 this morning, the survey team's tractor returned to base on autopilot. Scari was the sole passenger. The location and status of the rest of the team is unknown. At 0842, Scari succumbed to a xenomorph, xenomorph parasite. Dr. Vandenberg and the infirmary are in isolation. Ellis is setting up an emergency infirmary in the common room. Marshal Carver has assured me that the situation is under control. The parasite is localized and will be destroyed. I know the timing on this couldn't be worse, but the situation is fully under control. We have 10 days left, people. Keep your heads down, do your jobs, and we will ensure the future of this world. Welcome to Alien First Law. I am your game mother, Cameron, and I guess I should have the players introduce themselves along with their characters, starting with Corey on the left. Hey, I'm Corey. Uh, I'll be playing Gidget, the medic robot. And I'm Matt, and I will be playing Judith, the pilot robot. My name is Andy, and I'll be playing Finch, the roughneck robot. And I'm Alex, and I'll be playing Gray, and I prefer the term synthetic myself. Mm. The, the scientist, of course. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the colony world of Corbinek. Um, it is a damp, dusty charcoal briquette, or waterlogged charcoal briquette of a planetoid. It is a moon orbiting a gas giant as is the tradition with most alien films, uh, orbiting a uh, within the habitable, habitable zone of a distant M-class sun. It sucks here, at least according to the human colonists. As artificial people, you are somewhat less phased by this world's 12 hours of darkness, 24 hours of twilight, 12 hours of daylight, 24 hours of twilight. That's its, that's its day cycle, through some bizarre accident of stellar mechanics. Um, the colony is coming up on its 10th year anniversary, and the situation is stressful and broken in many ways. You are behind on basically every metric that it is possible to be behind on. Officially, this is because shortly after the events of the film Aliens, a company-wide directive came through um, regarding care and maintenance of the atmosphere processor, requiring several new safety features to be installed throughout the entire structure after uh, what turned out to be a rather costly lawsuit regarding the um, uh, the mechanical failure of the atmosphere processor at Hadley's Hope, resulting in the destruction of the colony and the death of every colonist. Such a shame. Uh, so, you know, pulling down your, your power source and uh, the thing that's making all your air and having to, you know, put in a whole bunch of new equipment and dis build that equipment on, like, you know, a fairly isolated place with a, a small population, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It probably set you back a long time. And, uh, you know, the company is understanding of that, as is the United America States, United American States, um, who are, you know, co-signatories on this co colonial venture. That being said, everyone is stressed out. Everyone is tired. You were supposed to have, the atmosphere was supposed to be stabilized by now. It is still not stabilized. Um, the population was supposed to be growing now. People are have exercised the delay, or the company has exercised the delay clause on contracts that prevents people from having children yet, because it's just not feasible yet. Um, so the em the stored embryos and zygotes are still in storage. The vast majority of the non-construction, non-atmospheric science um, hibernation pod crew colonists, the second generation colonists, 
or so-called 1.5 generation colonists are still in hypersleep because again it's not you, you just can't feed them um and now there's this originally there were uh 64 colonists in the first wave woken up one died in an accident several years ago and another was put into punitive hypersleep related to that death uh the former science lead was put into punitive hypersleep and now the survey team is missing and this is a source of uh stress and uh confusion anger among the remaining colonists current population uh 58 officially <laughs> Do the uh, synthetics count as people? They do. Number? They do for official population counts. Are we the only four um, synthetics in, among the the ranks? Yes, and I should probably throw in a as far as you know, because there is a precedent in the series for synthetics passing themselves off as full humans reasonably successfully. What if? What if? One of us is actually human. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is where we are going to begin uh, with the start of this. Oh, I don't want to call it a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> a newest, the newest challenge for the Corbinek venture. Um. Gidget and um, uh, 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 Finch, you have been summoned to the office of Marshall Carver. And office is like a very gener generous term for it. It is a, a desk in a small room off to the side with a arms locker and a cell in the back in case anyone needs to be thrown into the, like, the drunk tank. Uh, Marshall Carver is in his mid-30s. He's former uh, Colonial Marine military police. And uh, has a re reputation for being no fun and a bit of a bully. It is around, uh, around noon on the first day. No, 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 no bonus points for guessing why it's the first day. Okay. Uh, what's his position again? Sorry. Marshall Carver. No, no, Colonial Marshall. Oh, okay. So he. Oh, Marshall's not his name. Yes, Marshall, sorry. It's his the occupations. Rank. Yes. Okay. Uh, the the. Think like Old West. Um. Carver is like squared away and very like, upright very uh projects a lot of like internal discipline and doesn't have the full trust of the community definitely got a corn cup up his ass he says to you i've been tasked with uh investigating the events of this morning and i have asked the two of you to come with me and render any and all assistance that i deem necessary well, we have a look through the infirmary. Happy to oblige, Marshal. Right, show me a bloke. Right, we'll be fine. This is, it sounds like fun. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. Do you have any questions? Oh, should I bring anything? Do you need? Uh, I've got. Um, what have I got? I've got, oh, I've got a load, load and back. I've got some tools and things. Should I? Uh, and it should, is there anything we should be expecting to encounter? I don't know. We'll grab some respirators and then have a look through. Sounds good. All right. Uh, lovely day for an adventure. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. While this is happening, Judith and Gray, you have been summoned to the vehicle garage. Meeting you there is Dr. Martin who is the current chief science officer. 
Um, she's in her early 50s. Uh, her specialty is that she's an atmospheric chemist. And she tells you when you arrive. Uh, we've been told to uh, go over the, the tractor um, and look for an anything. Anything, Judith, I need you to uh, pull the, the, uh, the, the logs from it, if you can, and see where it's been. And uh, Gray, I need you to just search high and low on this thing. We'll get a... Uh, we'll find Tabor and she'll be able to help us pull it apart if we need to. Tabor is the mechanic, the vehicle mechanic. Um, God, I didn't need this. Okay, oh, well... A lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say that. You could say that. This is kind of the last... You know what? I'm not going to say this is the last thing I needed. It's in bad taste. Let's get started. Certainly. We shall do our utmost to keep uh, this squared away. Gidget and Finch. Marshall or uh, Marshall Carver leads you to the doors of the infirmary. Like you have to go. Let let let's set the scene. There is the administrative building, which is the former command center of the colony ship, which has just been like. Basically, the colony ship landed and was dismantled. Um, into various subcomponents that will act as like you know the administrative core then the living core then there's the hibernation uh core and then you take the back off and that's the 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 core of the atmosphere <laughs> processor the core core <laughs> the core core <laughs> there's also a computer core and an apple core and then some other cores <laughs> That sounded way more coherent in my head. <laughs> um, so you leave the, uh, the administrative area, and because Corbinek is a, uh, a blasted wasteland that is half buried in mud all of the time, all of the walkways between buildings are covered. So you are walking through like a, a circular trunkway that is... Um, kind of like a, uh, a skeletal um, structure covered with like clear plastic, essentially. And over the years, it has been repaired and patched so many times that it looks like it's more duct tape than actual like plastic. And it's always kind of like doing the thing where it like the pressure outside increases or drop, no, drop as there's wind. So it's always kind of like breathing a little bit and crinkling. Mm. Um, and he leads you through one of these to where the infirmary is, which is near the habitation area. Um, and unless you have any questions, Carver doesn't really say anything on the way over. But, you know, there's a little bit of a, a spring in his step today. Oh. Uh, maybe has a little bit more energy. Um, and you come up to the infirmary door, which is closed. Um, and I would ask you to give me a wits observation because I'm going to be a slightly more aggressive with the roles in the system since synthetics don't generate stress on failures. Sure. So I would so, like you to roll wits plus observation. That's a d10 per point and then successes are what? Uh, it's a die six per point. Die and six successes per point. are, uh, I believe on sixes. Yeah. Every six is a success, I believe. Mm -hmm. I, I've got two successes. Two successes. Nice. Uh, the quarantine seals are not active. This oh. has not been put under quarantine. It's closed. Oh. It's locked. So the, uh, the that I... sorry, the message you said at the beginning that kind of went out to everyone the the O five hundred. Mm-hmm everything so we, we we expect it to be under quarantine yes with a although uh looking back Martin on it out here or whatever looking back on it the word quarantine was never used all right hmm. 
I, I, I will point that out to. to, to I'll say, uh, uh, wait a minute, Marshal. Uh, sorry, you know the boy should be on this. Usually, uh, uh, the quarantine seal should be on this door. I don't know. I, I could, if you give him a minute, I could check it out. I could, you know, do some tinkering away for you. He raises his hand. Says, uh, orders from Kincaid were that quarantine is not to be enacted immediately. Uh, you understand, right? Of course. Yeah, yes. certainly. Must yeah. have a good reason for it. Mm -hmm. If you want to give me just a straight wits roll, maybe you can divine the reason for it. Ooh. All right. No. Nope. Um, no. No? Okay. The, the reasoning remains mysterious to you. Hmm. Might have just thought this area needed more ventilation. <laughs> <laughs> a little fresh air to, you know, cycle out it's... the bad humors. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, we, so that's where medicine has cycled back around to with the humorous. Yeah, the yeah, future. yeah, yeah. It's, it's it seems like a, a phlegmatic kind of yeah. Uh, the, you know, the maybe colony, there's too much phlegiston. Yeah, the exactly. colony is too low on good humor right now. It's a bit tense, so we should really circulate it to get the good humors. I agree. Yeah, yeah. We need some black bile, black or yellow. Well, it it has to be in balance. Yes. Mm. So maybe eat some cinnamon. There or just get some fresh air, like this section of the infirmary. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> Carver pulls on his respirator and draws his sidearm. I put on my respirator and stand there awkwardly without a gun. I, I also take my, put my rest of my separator over my face for the look of the thing. All right. He opens the door and enters the room like he has just been watching all the action movies in the world. <laughs> Are we supposed to follow you? Would you like us to wait out here? He gestures to you. I think that means we go in. All right. Following. Close the door. It will do. Boop. I'll hit the button. <laughs> the infirmary is uh, in a, in disarray. Scari's body uh, is on the table, um, rolled over onto its side. There is an enormous uh, hole in his chest cavity. And his face is contorted in, like, agony. Um, the smell in the room is of um, human viscera. Uh, it, and uh, a, a little bit of, like, uh, um, uh, fecal matter. Phew. He definitely needs some fresh air in here. Oh Gonna my have God. to get the mop, too, I think. Dr. Vandenberg... Verg's body is also still here, although it's more difficult to get a sense of its condition since he was wearing, um, like, a, 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 like the, um, a biohazard suit. Cool. Right, and it was hooked up to the, like, the, uh, the air tube is, like, pulled taut, and so that, like, his body is kind of, like, a little bit upright. I'm just going to watch the marshal to see what he's doing. Um, we'll move from there back to the garage. Real quick side note. Are we meant to have read that thing yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We will, I will tell you. It'll be a good, it'll be, it'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, everyone's agenda right now uh, I probably should have mentioned this somewhere where Keep you would have heard it safe. instead of thinking it in my head, which I am told is usually a good way of broadcasting it to everyone, but it might not be effective if you don't like see me, uh, is that your agendas remain um, Asimov's three laws right now. 
So those are, it is impossible for me to harm or by omission of, of action allowed to be harmed to human being. You must obey orders given to you by human beings, except where those orders would conflict with the first law. And I must protect my own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Back in the garage, um, Dr. Martin is, um, she looks like she doesn't know what to do, right? It's, this is not her, her field of expertise. Um, she doesn't even really go outside most days. She's kind of monitors instruments and fiddles with knobs in the atmosphere processor. Mm. Um, and once she has like kind of a look at the tractor which is i don't know if you've seen aliens presumably most of you have but in one scene there is a very large actually there might be a photo of it in the book but this is like kind of uh, an enormous like two and a half ton truck on the most intricately gimbaled and articulated wheels like essentially like th this can roll over anything Right, it's a cross between a giant truck and one of the um, the spider tanks from Ghost in the Shell, Ooh. kind of. So it's a um, truck, truck chicoma. Yeah, kind of. Only instead of having like feet at the end, it has wheels. It's truly an all-terrain vehicle. Yes, it is rugged and dependable and expensive, and um, we named it Charlie. <laughs> it is named Charlie vehicles please uh you know what what you're probably thinking looks what you're thinking of right now probably looks way cooler than the drawing i could find in here so <laughs> we're gonna go with that even though the it's, art in here is very good yeah it, big old truck um judith could, could, could you could you uh could you take over here please certainly and judith takes out of her pocket an item she keeps around for any nervous people around her so that they'll talk to her less. Mm -hmm. It's just a chain link kind of circle of interconnected chain links. Oh, okay. It's, okay. it's just a fidget device. Oh, okay. Hands it to them and says, I want this back very flatly and then just takes over. Uh, Dr. Martin is like, she looks at it for a moment as you like drop it into her hand. Thank you. If it keeps her from talking to Judith, then uh, that's a success. <laughs> Fair enough. So what is it exactly that Judith is doing? <laughs> uh, she is asking you to check out the tractor for anything unusual, any signs of what happened to the survey team. She wants you to pull its navigational log. Mm. And, okay. uh, and that's, also uh, both of us? just... Um, she, she has also uh, asked... Um, uh, uh, Tabor to come over, who is the vehicle mechanic. Mm -hmm. Gray, you're not exactly sure why you're here? Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll start having a look just like doing a, a vehicle inspection with uh, my pen light or something. It's mm -hmm. so like, well, I may as well make myself useful. Okay. Just sort of like look in the wheel wells and little hidey holes and so forth yeah. okay um then give me a wits observation roll please so wits observation um uh, so is that that's both of them together yep correct so I, have, I need more dice <laughs> <laughs> i'm very observant always a good feeling yeah while he's rolling that, um, Judith is a pilot, mm -hmm. 
but most of the piloting work on this planet, I'm sure, is on the ground driving trucks like these. So would she be familiar with this model? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You okay. have two of these. They're, um, you've both logged, it's been 10 years, I'm going to say hundreds, possibly thousands of hours in them. Yeah. So I know, I know where all the handholds are. I know what looks off when it looks off. That absolutely. crack has slowly been growing in the windshield for years. Yeah, you, you've, um, you know everything that's been bondoed over and sanded down and primered black. Yeah, Finch just put a lot of JB Weld into this old girl. <laughs> um, I have three successes. Uh, you make short work of an external investigation of the tractor. It you find nothing out of the ordinary on the exterior of the vehicle. It is covered in exactly the kind of like uh, ultra fine dust and mud that coats every external surface on this colony. All right, um, I'll tell that to Judith. Um, it's just like, I'm, there's nothing out of the ordinary from the outside. Is there, so, is there something else I can oh, do to actually, expediate hold on. this? Hmm? Now that I think about it, no, there would be. Um, deep in the wheel wells with three successes, since that's an extraordinary amount of success, Let's say um, that there is an unusual color of mud caked in the interior of the wheel wells. Ooh. Like that it it's under a layer of the mundane stuff you expect to find here, but it is of a um, normally the the grime around here is gray. This has, like, a slightly golden look to it. Like, beach sand, almost. Weird. Hmm. Um, what do I have that I could, like, grab a sample of this with? Like, even if it was just, like, a stick or something? Let's, let's assume that you just have that kind of, like... If you were called to do an investigation... Yeah. Maybe let's say like... that you just have the tools to do whatever you need to do and want to do with it here within reason. Sounds good. I'll I'll grab some of that stuff and then okay. report to, to Judith. Be like, oh look! Sand! Yeah, that looks like silica. Would Anything it... uh, else you find? Nothing. Is this material consistent with any region you're familiar with uh, else, uh, on Corbinek? Is there any, I guess, construction projects that would have had this kind of soil at them? No. No. Nowhere that you our guys need... are working. Uh, presuming you can, if you want to get a better answer, you can go to the laboratory facility I'm, and I'll have a look there. I'll probably do that next. Okay. Um, uh, before we do that, let's go back to the infirmary. Give me, well, what do you want to do? Um, Marshall is like, or er, Marshall uh, Carver has uh, holstered his weapon and is kind of looking confused as to what he's expected to do here. Uh, he gives off the impression of somebody who is poking things with a stick. Kind of like, all right, sure is two dead bodies. Um, Uh, Marshall, um, is is this is this expected? Is this is this the, what? Basically, oh, I'm saying it. Just you know, if, uh, firstly, I'm wondering how I can be of service to you in this in this uh, in this room here. And secondly, I'll, I'll, I'm wondering if um, if we should be at all worried about the uh, condition of the room as it stands presently. These are the, well, the uh, dead bodies. Well, Finch, I would say that this does fall outside the usual mission parameters that we expect around here. Um, you're here to provide a um, uh, source of manual labor in case it should become necessary. 
And uh, uh, what we should probably do is uh, get these bodies policed up and uh, secured. Very well, sir. Um, and I, uh, I, I go over to um, uh, 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 Scary, and uh, uh, and I'm about to roll them over, and I say, "Oh, Gidget, um, what's the best way to uh, to um, do what, what uh, the good marshal said to this body? Where, 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 can we put them in some sort of cupboard, closet?" <laughs> uh, I think he intends that we just kind of. Check them over and clean them up a little bit. Get them looking a little decent. Oh, I see. Oh, so uh, I'm going to grab, uh, I assume there's like a trolley bed thing. Yeah, there's actually um, a small morgue facility here. Yeah. And uh, a crematorium. Oh, it's only okay. been used once. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that facility exists, right? Did you know cruise ships have morgues? Oh yeah. That's whack. Yeah. That's good not say. Eh? Considering the demographics of the people who go on cruises, it turns out not unnecessary. Okay. That's true. Well, you're not going to throw them overboard. No, you, you, it's actually illegal, as it yeah. turns out. My parents looked into it when they went on cruises, because my dad was like, I want to be buried at sea. And my mom's like, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Look. Okay, weird aside. We're going to store that one um <laughs> in the morgue let's put yeah. that back in the disney vault yeah <laughs> yeah back into the disney vault um there are body bags here as well like this this would be where you would store those right all right so uh i'm just gonna ask finch for some help getting uh our doctor who's attached by hose and slumped over up onto the cart since that are already mm -hmm. kind of contained. Just detach the hose holding them up. Okay. Like right and you bend and finch. the knees and lift. Right, um, as soon as you lift his body, uh, um, Carver goes, Ho! Ho? Uh, what's wrong, sir? There's a, there's a hole in the floor. Oh. So there is! And underneath the body is a, um, a melted hole in the floor of the infirmary. Straight cool. through, like, the, um, the plating and down into the subfloor. Cool, that's no, deep. And there is a corresponding hole in Vanderberg's body. Wow, uh, through and through. Ooh, Oof. that's um, that's probably doing a terrible thing to the uh, foundations. Of the uh, <laughs> there's, memory. and once you lift the body, there is just like a slight breeze. Oh, well, there's your fresh air, mate. There's uh, there's your was one problem solved. Yeah, uh, it looks no, like we didn't got... need the quarantine seals anyway. It was already broken. <laughs> oh, this isn't good. No, it's not, sir. Um, uh, should uh, per perhaps should, can should we check below to see how far uh, this hole goes? Yeah, yeah, Finch. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you have a look? Right, you are. Sir. I'll stay up here, all right, and uh, provide comms. Yeah, I'll get Scary zipped up tight here, ready to head off to the morgue. Good. So, uh, Finch goes to find some sort of maintenance hatch. Where you can get lower. Um. Yeah, let, let's say you're able to find that in like you. In fact, as given your role in the in in the colony, you would have that kind of knowledge to set your fingertips. So, whether it's it's probably not in the infirmary, but there would be a hatch to the sub sub floor somewhere, right, to do maintenance. Um, but before we do that, let's go back to the garage. Um, Tabor is kind of like looking around, seemingly confused about what she's expected to do. Is and... she viciously fidgeting? 
with the uh, midget t- right now. <laughs> that would be Dr. Martin, who is oh, just kind yes. of like... Um, and Dr. Martin actually calls Gray over and says, well, what did you find? Uh, soil sample. Um, we're not able to identify uh, what region it would be from, but uh, I thought I might have a little investigation in the science lab to see if we can determine where it's from. Let's wrap up here first. Show me where you found it. And she seems to be a bit more engaged now. Yeah, I'll take like her she, over She to the... gets up off the crate that she was sitting on and heads over to the vehicle. I can do a thing. Yeah, yeah she awesome. has a task now, and that seems hey. to make her happy. Job, job, job. Um... And she says, Judith, could you check the cab, please, and the um, and the vehicle storage? Right See away. if there's anything there. And uh, Judith holds out her hand for the fidget. Oh. Should make Thank more of you. those. Just scampers off Thank to you. check the places. It's warm. And a little damp. Ew. Everything here is a little damp, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, do I have to roll for investigating the cab, or does my in-depth knowledge of operating these just kind of give me that insight? I would think that your possibility for failure here is so low as to be non-existent, considering that you are, like... You're, you are one of the colony's two pilots, possibly the last pilot now. Hmm. Since Gas was supposed to be driving the other one. Or supposed to be driving this one. And did not come back. Yeah. Oh, that's Gas is out of gas. I... Mm. <laughs> he hates that. <clears throat> <laughs> Judith knows. Or maybe he <laughs> hated that. Yeah. Maybe that's why Gas his name tends. is Gas. Yeah. It has it has two S's. It's German, he says. It's just like <laughs> for the last time it runs on ethanol. <laughs> it's Gauss, not gas. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh the interior of the cab is uh it's got that human smell to it. Ugh. Wet human uh, dookie. You know, there there is a shower in the uh, living area, but it is, like, basically a bag that you zip yourself into and water dumps on you and then sluices out. It's kind of, like, it's very space efficient and it's very cleverly designed, but it's not... It, it's perfunctory. Uh, put, it puts the funk in perfunctory. Oh, hell. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever, like, been inside a worksite truck, but, like, all of the seams in the upholstery are full of, like dust and it's just like the footwells are crammed with crushed food uh containers there's a queen tape <laughs> um man somebody hauled this all the way from earth yeah you find nothing unusual in the um no wait no wait you do there is a reason under, why I'm checking this out. Yeah. Under one of the um, seats in the back, crammed way in the back, you see in your flashlight a reflection of something the color of untinted beeswax kind of glossy hmm. kind of and it has like color, the or... yeah a little amber but a little greener than that and it's got like the um it has the smooth segmented look of a large insect Yeesh. but it's way back there you would have to reach in to get it unidentified organic What? Martin says from outside. 
Looks like an unidentified organic. Kind of glossy. Bit phlegm colored. When you have a weird cold. Um, Martin pulls herself up on like the. Uh, e she's like, you see her hands looking for handholds around the door frame, and then she finds the actual like handhold and is like, mm -hmm. oh, for Christ's sake. And pulls herself up and looks into the cab. It's like, did I hear you right? Yeah. Organic. Flashlight's on it right now. Can you reach it? Can I? <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. Tabor, um, Martin calls. We need you to... We need your help. Back in the infirmary. Gidget and Finch. Scarry's body is, um... It's lighter. They're always lighter than they look. So you can just kind of like... Yeah. Thump into the bag and... Zzz. Seems like a weird trick of perception. When people are alive, like, they seem to weigh a ton. And then they die and lose, like, five pounds. Easiest weight loss program on the planet. <laughs> just die. Mm hmm Which is weird, because you'd expect their bodies to be, like, all floppy all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm just chattering to the marshal. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm sure he loves mm -hmm. that. Yeah. The marshal is, like, standing over the, the hole in the floor with a flashlight, with one hand on the holster. <laughs> and, it's like, uh, you look in their eyes, and it's like... It's like you expect them to blink, and they don't blink anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. any moment, any moment, they could just close, or like, what if one of their hands moved right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good idea, Gidget. You should do that. You should do that. I should do... Sh should I? That seems a little disrespectful. I agree. I agree. I agree. And he, like, Pulls out a cigarette and lights it. Now, normally I would say this is a bad place to do that in, what with all of the extra flammable gases we store in the infirmary in case of situations, but, you know, it's, I understand the need for a little stress relief here and there. Yeah. Plus, we got yeah, some really totally. good airflow going. Totally. Finch, are you down there yet? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, it's very dark, but, um,. <laughs> I've got uh, I've I've got my little cigarette lighter here. It seems to be uh, doing the job. Yes, it, it has seemed to go very far down. The uh, the subfloor itself is actually quite shallow. Oh. Um. <laughs> so like. Yeah. Uh, I should give you a good description of it so you can plan what you want to do. Sure. There's a hole in the floor. It is dark. And there's a hole in the subfloor as well, including a hole in like the um, the trunking underneath. Luckily, there is nothing under this one spot in the floor. Okay. If it had gone through electrical, that probably would have been bad. If it had gone through uh, a water main, that probably would have also been like extremely inconvenient. But there was just like empty space here. If the um, hole was a pizza, uh, what size would we have ordered? Uh, like a 12 inch like medium ev every, pizza every pizza is a personal pizza if you have the dedication <laughs> to the task yeah. uh, but this would be like a uh, you know an 8 inch alright goodness it, you um, know it and... holds about the size of a medium, mediumly ambitious pizza down here sir it doesn't <laughs> seem to have uh, eaten for anything very important do you do you see anything though well, I can see uh, I can see the edges of the the floor and the subfloor here. It looks like um, oh, I dare to say that might be acid damage, sir. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Do you see anything? Do you see? Do you see what did this? And uh, and I will I will take my cigarette lighter and I will. I will give it a good once over around here and, and like lean down through the hole. Um, and, uh, and what do I see? 
Um, give me a wits observation roll. Excellent. We'll do that. Uh, what kind of roughneck go. doesn't have a flashlight? The director really did you dirty in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> More I cinematic. thought about having thought about having a flashlight, but I thought it'd be funnier if he just had like a, a lighter and was just holding it down. The thing. Uh, but I've got one success. One success. Um, the the subfloor here is okay. So there's the hole in the floor to the infirmary. Mm -hmm. Then there is the floor of the subfloor, and it is pitted and damaged, but not penetrated. Mm -hmm. Ah. And there is again everywhere here. There's dust and dirt, and with one success, you see um, scrapes and marks in the dust, leading off away from you. And uh, also just like in that there is like what looks like dried blood here as well, and viscera from above. I see. I uh, <clears throat> I take all of that in and I call back up. Uh, Marshall, it's um, eh, I think do we uh, do we have some sort of rodent problem at the moment? There's nothing alive on this rock but us, Finch. Right. Well, I think uh, I think we may be in trouble, sir, um, because it looks like you've got uh, either a very violent raccoon or. Well, I don't know what's it. There's, uh, it looks like something's been scrabbling around down here in the in the blood and viscera, and well, so I don't know what kind of thing could uh, could do that if it's just us, sir. You ever seen a raccoon, Finch? <laughs> no, not in the flesh, sir. Is it as nice as I've dreamed it to be? I wouldn't know. I've never seen one either. <clears throat> oh. Love the love the raccoons, though. On. What's a good name for a raccoon cartoon? The, rac the, the raccoons. raccoons. The raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> Got there. Got there. Run with us. Um, Everything you need. Sorry. <laughs> I love the raccoons when I was a kid. Yeah. That's good yeah. Cartoon. That is actually what Carver says. Oh. All right. Um, like, you think the viscera would have been the first thing you noticed down there? That's what I noticed when we got in this room. Some very Whoa. selective, narrow, narrow focus there. Well, let's just say it, it was dark. It was dark, and frankly, Gidget, my uh, my programming leans more towards the upkeep and maintenance of this facility rather than you know dealing with all the squishies inside of it. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, I'll tell you what, it is a little scary down here. It is a little creepy and weird. Um, yeah, may I come back up, sir? Can you, uh, can you follow it? Very well, sir, I shall. And I, <laughs> I'll make my, uh, Finch makes his, his way moving very slowly now. In fact, he takes, he t he's got his old tape recorder there, and mm -hmm. he, he pulls out um, one of his mission logs and pockets that and puts in uh, the best of Johnny Cash and presses <laughs> play. Just, just pretty quietly, just to, um, just, just to be a bit of a comfort as he's, as he's following. Like, Sorry, Fidge, didn't mean to insult your your work ethic or or your ability or anything like that. I was just, just making conversation, trying to be friendly, like. It's all right, Gidget. I completely understand. You know, we've all got our own perspectives. It's, uh, it's good that we listen to each other. Exactly you actually right. Like and uh, you can actually see Finch move past the hole. Like it's so it's so small in there yeah. that as you like crawl forward, like your jacket puffs up through the hole briefly and goes shh, 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 as it like recompresses. So does that mean that it is so cramped in there that he has to drag himself over the viscera and just drag it down the front of his suit? No. It's uh, slightly cleaner behind you than it is in front of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Carver turns to you, Gidget, and says, did you know Vandenberg? Well, Doesn't Vandenberg was the chief, <laughs> chief medical officer. Chief medical officer. Oh, we worked closely for, for the time he was around. I hated him. <laughs> Vandenberg uh, had a reputation for being, well, col colonial doctors are kind of like ship's doctors um, in that it, not the stereotype is of not necessarily the highest pedigree. And Vandenberg had uh, what you could call a uh, atrocious bedside manner. Ooh. Kind of like um, just always cracking inappropriate jokes, making people kind of uncomfortable and nervous <laughs> and being like, <laughs> could just be a little cancer. Anyway. Um, Hope our antibiotics uh, hold out, as, uh, otherwise you're screwed. Yeah. Vandenberg, is that real? Oh, no, 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 probably not. You probably don't have anything to worry about. Right? He, he was one of those people who thinks he's way funnier than he was. That's awful. Um, well, he's, yeah, he's... I can't say we saw eye to eye on the, the humor front, but uh, <laughs> seemed, seemed competent enough. You, uh, you programmed to like jokes, Gidget? No, it's more of an acquired taste. Figured. I figured. Back in the hangar. Tabor is, uh, has also joined you in the crew compartment. And has taken out, like, a socket wrench, basically. And is trying to disassemble the, the the seat to get it up and away. Um, and finally is like, all right, I'm going to need a hand with this as she removes the last bolt. Uh, I'm probably close enough to help. Okay. I mean, I'm in there, aren't I? Yep. Yeah. The, the there's, flashlight. there's three or four of you in here, depending on whether gray joins you or not. Hmm. Well, I mean, if it's crowded, then you probably have more than enough people. Hmm. All right, on three, three, and Tabor like lifts, and whoever's helping her lifts, um, and at first, like it's just the stuff you expect to find under the seat, right? There's like years of uh, detritus here, like you know somebody wipes their nose and throws the the, the tissue on the floor. Oh, gross. And it rolls rolls back here. There's like a uh, first aid kit that gets pulled once a year, and somebody has to like sign the paper on it that says mm -hmm. it's okay. There's a fire extinguisher, um, and then crammed way in the back behind all of that stuff, what looks like a um, what looks like a glove at first, but is not a glove. It has too many fingers, and they're too small, and it's too weird, and it's too awful. But it Weirdly looks shiny. like a neoprene glove, right? Like oh, one okay. of those big fire, like, you know, one of the, a big heavy work glove. It looks like it's made out of that material, but it's too awful to be that. Oh, floppy crab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a horseshoe crab, maybe? Or a spider? Or a combination of the both. Yeah. The hell is that? I, I Judith probably is not the one holding the thing up. She's not very strong. <laughs> but if someone asks her to grab it, she's going to grab it. No, no, don't, don't don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Oh, not this is it. We have to quarantine. We have to quarantine this entire We're all going to have to go into quarantine. Oh. God. Uh, 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 she pulls out a, um, a device, a communications device. I don't know if it's a radio or a phone or whatever. Um, you know what? No, the, she would go up to the front cab and use the, the internal comm on this. Yeah. Uh, I need to talk to Kincaid right now. And uh, you're just kind of 
left there, um, whoever's helping, I assume Gray and Tabor are lifting this, the the chair. I mean, uh, Tabor will be like, let, let's put it down, let's put it down, right, and move it off to the side. Yeah. And you all just kind of stand there looking at this thing. I will, yes, I will, I will peer at it. <laughs> okay. Judith is purposefully maintaining eye contact with it, with a steady flashlight. Yeah. It is not moving. Ah, mm. uh, Gray, what do you want to do? Anything I can discern about the nature of whatever the hell this is. Like, it's obviously some kind of organic. Mm -hmm. uh, so give me Wix observation, or is there anything that might be better for that? Um, I think it's probably just Wits observation. Yeah, let's do that. I got one success. One success. Uh, okay. It's there made is, of meat. There is n one success is actually like I mean that's all you really need, right? That is that is a reasonable amount of information. So I'm going to try to like formulate how exactly I want to describe it. Mm -hmm. There should be nothing on this planet except for you and the things that you brought with you. Yeah. The quarantine procedure for what you can and are allowed to deposit and how you are supposed to handle all of your waste on these worlds is incredibly tightly con con uh, 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 described because you are essentially you're building up an atmosphere from scratch you are seeding the ground with like new microorganisms and anything that gets out into that is just going to take it over right like these new ecosystems are incredibly fragile and if you get sloppy suddenly you wind up on the roach planet right or the slime mold planet and you have to call in the or marines the and they planet. have to use flamethrowers on everything and usually like it sets you back decades in progress if something slips out of like a um a processing tank or some food or anything like that like you can't have any cheese right nothing with seeds um like your your all of your um uh uh like all of your sewage is treated and retreated oh, yeah. uh, very very carefully nothing with any form of fertility yeah. to it um dr martin yes gray shall we uh contain this organism in some way yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there would be sample bags. There would be sample bags in the um, in cargo. I would suggest perhaps the um, human personnel get some distance from it, just for safety's sake. I'll take care of it. I will find a sample bag. Yes, yes. That's 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 wise, Gray. Okay. Um, you can access the cargo half of the crawler from the inside or from the outside. You don't have to go outside to get it, get to it. But, you know, for some oh, reason you wanted to go outside, you could. Nah, I'll get it from the inside. Okay. You crawl through the access hatch in the back into the cargo area of the crawler. Mm -hmm. Which, for these purposes, has just, like, some survival gear, um, some rations... You know, everything you would need to go out into the mountains to go chasing after um, uh, uh, some weird signal for about a week in fairly modest conditions. Mm. Um, so what I, yeah, what I want is like a sample bag and maybe like some shop towels or something. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you're able to find that. And... You also find something else. Uh oh. In the sample, there's there's another sample bag here. It's tagged meticulously. Uh huh. And is labeled unidentified uh, organic sample, and it is about the size of um. You know a cartoon garbage bag. Yes black vinyl uh these things are like 
these things are bulletproof, basically, right? These sample bags, nothing gets into them or out, out of them. And it is just like, has this tag on the top that reads unidentified organic sample with a date. And they're opaque? Yes, they're opaque. I'm just imagining the intro of King of the Hill mm -hmm. at the end of it with the trash bag. And it's that bag. And <laughs> the label is just across it, the way the yeah. credits were. Yeah, yeah. Like, these are unmistakable, deliberately. Yeah. Gotcha. But on that, we should take a quick break. That sounds great. All right. So we'll be back in three minutes, chat, or thereabouts. Hello, and welcome back to session one of Alien First Law here on Dice Friends. When we last left our intrepid adventurers, they were having experiences and processing them. <laughs> they were having sensations and then, no, perceptions that they were processing into... Experience, perhaps? Yeah. Sensation and perception. I would... Sense and I took sensibility. A class once. Yeah. Stimulus response. Stimulus response. Boop, 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 so, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Judith, yes. as you sit there looking at this thing, um, your device rings. Like the call comes through for you. Or a message mm -hmm. comes through for you. My radio? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Judith. Please report to hibernation. Please report to hibernation. And I call back, will do, and uh, call over one of the doctors to hold a flashlight on this thing. Wait, wh where, where are you going? I got a call to hibernation. Uh, should you, We we should be, under quarantine, Judith. Uh, well, you're giving me one order, and I'm getting another. I... I, I, guess, I guess. Um, Bray, in the, in the cargo hall, or in the cargo container, the cargo compartment. That's unusual. You have this... This sample bag. Uh huh. What do you do? Okie dokie. Um, just what do I. Dr. Martin. Uh, yes, Gray. Uh, there's a sample bag in here. It's tagged as an unidentified organism. What? What? No, if... no let me see that. Let me see that. And you hear her like inside the car, the crew area. Doctor yeah. Martin pushes past you, uh, and scrambles in expertly through the cargo hatch. I'll just like, is it lit in here or? A um yeah sure you there's actually like a there's a button you can hit that will turn on the interior light. It turns on exactly one LED. Mm -hmm. Dick. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the ones where it's like you you hit it and immediately whatever it is you're looking at is cast in shadow. And you're like, oh, how do they always arrange them like this? <laughs> so, um, so, I infer from context that the team encountered some sort of organism and took samples. And perhaps some amount of it... Uh, turned out to be dangerous. That, uh, that does seem likely. What? And you can actually give me a empathy roll. Oh, uh, <laughs> just empathy? Just empathy, I think. That's a negatory there. An expression crosses her face. And she looks at you and says, should we open it? I think that would be most unwise. 
Yeah, but should we open it? <laughs> I think that would be most unwise. You're right. Okay. My recommendation is that we place this in some sort of secure container. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is what already. Um, the radio squawks to life in the crew cab, and Tabor picks it up. Mm -hmm. Um, and you hear her say, Tabor. Yeah, just a second. Uh, Martin, it's Kincaid on the horn. She's like, oh, for... And scrambles back through the the cargo hatch. She's never been in one of these vehicles before, and is like, "Have you ever done the thing where you like try to pull yourself through a hatch, and you realize, no, I need my legs to go through first. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, um, no. she's one hundred percent that. Actually, um, I'll follow her as she's going, like just completely on top of. Uh, what she's trying to do um with no amount of tact just be like uh i was i think that i should take the uh other organism bag it and store it in the same place perhaps we can use the vehicle itself as a containment yeah that, that that's a great idea great go and do that go and do that uh judith help help her out i'm going to do that and then i'm going to go to the uh cryo Sleep place. Okay. Um, Gray, as you are bagging it up, uh, a call comes through for you. Mm -hmm. Gray, okay. please report to hibernation. Gray, to hibernation, please. Hmm. Who is you it that's too? making this call, or is it just like a... Uh, it's on your personal communication device. But it is like, is it a is it a voice? Is it like someone? In yeah, it's a voice. Okay, and it's give me an empathy roll. These things are kind of tinny. Yeah, all right. Should I roll that as well? Nope. Does oh, it sound oh. like the same voice, or would I hear it? Uh, you would hear this. Yeah. Okay. If you want to, you can. Yeah. I mean, I have empathy too. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Gray, did you get any successes? Nope. Not on mine. No. Either. So I All right. have no idea who this is. Uh, it. Not not immediately. No. Um, and you hear Martin in the front of the cab going, "What do you mean no quarantine? It's an, it's a fucking xenomorph." Yeah. I'll what do you mean no quarantine? No, I don't know what the word means. It's the general term for these things, Kincaid. It doesn't mean, it means strange shape. Come on. Dr. Martin, I've just been called to uh, um, hibernation. Of course you have. Of course you... Yeah, apparently you would, wouldn't you? Okay, that's great. We'll be going then. Apparently. Is it like... Um... It's like is is I just want to be able to determine like if this is the uh, um, official chain of command uh, directive. It seems to be like there's not really a chain of command so much. This isn't a military thing. You're just expected to do what you're told. Mm. Oh, okay, from anybody. I mean, I just figured that there is even like some sort of informal hierarchy. Hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, is is someone in charge? Um, nominally, Martin should be in charge of you, but if you get a directive from somebody else, then you are expected to obey that. All right. Back in the infirmary and beneath the infirmary, um, Gidget, you have bagged Scari. Yep. And you moved um, uh, uh, Vanderberg's body onto a tray onto a rolly yeah bed thing do you what what do you do uh is carver doing anything he uh he seems to like come to his senses a bit and he's like well okay uh, i guess we should what is what happened 
Can you do an autopsy or something, Gidget? I'm not usually the first one to call for such things. Uh, Can uh, you... Question, is, is Doc Martin a doctor? Like a uh, medical doctor? Sh- do we have a coroner? Like uh, That was Vanderberg. Vanderberg? Okay. Um, Ellis is the... Uh, would be the ranking medical technician now. Yeah. So, I recommend uh, getting uh, Ellis down to the morgue to perform an autopsy. Ellis is busy setting up a secondary infirmary. Just have a look. Do 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 it. Just. Uh, okay, so I unzip Scary's bag. There's some bits missing. This uh, chest area should all be uh, in together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. Massive trauma. Massive trauma. <laughs> And uh, the other one, Doctor what Vanderberg? Did you say? Vanderberg. Yeah, uh, shouldn't shouldn't have an acid hole all the way through. Uh, him, uh, I believe that broke the containment on on his suit, which is also unsafe. Right. Um, is there anything inside his suit? Is there anything still in the suit with him? About seventy percent of him. Finch, about seventy percent of him. <laughs> you are uh, working your way through the subfloor and uh, following this like trail th- through the dust with your little like cigarette lighter. Yeah, and I like um, to imagine that it is psychologically a nightmare if he if it affected him at all. It's 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 so narrow as to be a claustrophobe's worst nightmare. But he's per- well, perfectly calm. Yeah, oh, and yeah, like honestly. the worst part is that you will have to like back out. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no! Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, that right? is and when it... it gets you as yeah. a claustrophobe. Is the moment mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I have to back up. Yeah, it goes crawl exactly... a mile and a half of viscera. It goes, <laughs> and then like your coat slower. catches on something and just goes like, <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't phase you in the least. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so you're following this trail, and you're following this trail, and you're going like meters past the infirmary to where you get to where you your internal navigation tells you that the external wall should be. Mm-hmm. Right. And there is another like ragged hole in the wall. This one looks like it was scraped or chewed or eaten through. And hanging on like a little barb is like a um, a translucent, what looks like a glove or a uh, a piece of like clear plastic. Uh, give me an observation wits roll. I've been rolling. That's my lowest stat. I've been rolling. I'm so well. sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. I love. Oh, I love horrible situations. I uh, yeah. I, I no success. No success. Yeah. Carl, okay. I found a rubber Johnny down here. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, you you don't know what it is. You don't recognize it. Can I use medical aid to? Absolutely. Autopsy. To... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At please least, do. Like, uh, I want to check to see like how far along Vanderberg got on his autopsy of Scari, and then yeah. kind of at least a visual inspection of both. Okay. So, uh, Vanderberg was not autopsying Scari. Okay, he was just uh, quarantined in here with him. Yeah, yeah, he was examining him. Okay. But uh, roll, roll me medical aid, empathy. Two successes. Okay. Um... There is less of Scari here than even your joking would suggest. Whatever came out of Scari um, came away with more of more of his stuff than would simply be displaced by it. Right. Um, and with two successes, you are drawn to think about like viruses that repurpose your cells right for their own ends 
Um, but there is like all of the organs are either small atrophied or missing. Hmm. Mm. And there is like a um uh, there, there is a, uh, well, ob obviously a cavity here that was burst through. Like, the bones are shattered outwards. Yeah. And apparently it was quite painful, judging by the expression <laughs> on Skari's face. Which lines up. That, that makes sense to you. There's pain, and then there's Motrin pain. <laughs> Vanderberg, um died of basically the opposite injuries. His suit is clawed open. Okay. And there is a gaping wound in his chest as well. Where something... It appears something went from Skari into Vanderberg. And then out of Vanderberg again. Possibly, like, launched from Skari and then, like, Ah! Like, quad into Vanderberg's suit. Some sort of meat gopher. <laughs> mm hmm Yes. Well, Marshall, it looks like whatever creature was responsible for this uh, came out of Skari very quickly and partially devoured Vanderberg before escaping through the floor. Did you say creature? Yeah. You ever know, hear about those wasps that like lay their eggs in tarantulas and then the young grow inside and then that's where they get their nutrition for... Uh, yeah, li li like in that movie. Larval stages, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That movie. Do you think that's what happened here? The evidence would suggest it. I, I feel deeply out of my depth. That seems fanciful. And he delivers the word fanciful with the absolute confidence of somebody who has heard somebody they respect use the word fanciful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he's trying oh, to impress an android. That's really cute. Uh, say, say, meanwhile, um, Finch mm -hmm. has... Uh, has uh, uh, has been backing his way out of this uh, of, of this whatever whatever time minuscule crawl mm -hmm. space that's that's really at the certain points with pipes is just pressing against his face as he's pulling back and has has come into the room sort of scraping the viscera off his his, his clothes because he knows that might be alarming to somebody but so, so sorry about that um look um, sir, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, it's strange down there. Um, uh, there was, uh, uh, I followed it, as you told me, all the way through the raccoon trails until it got to, um, uh, the outer, uh, wall. And, uh, there's a hole there now. Um, hmm. and, um, oh, there is this oh. as well. And he reaches up under his cap and pulls oh. out oh. the, uh, the... <laughs> translucent rubber glove-like thing and holds it out. I found this as well, sir. It seems important. Oh, also, just, uh, I realize I probably didn't do a good job of describing it. The hole is not in the exterior wall. It is in, like, a neighboring, like... Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Kind of a separation um, between uh, units. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you hold it out, it, like, um, it is... Uh, bloody and damp, but it is kind of like this uh, sack, almost. Like a textured sack with like, um, almost like, uh, like veins on the outside a bit. Yeah. Like it was connected to something else. And he holds it out like it's like he's he's just been drying a t-shirt, and checking right. to see if, the, if that seems dry enough to wear. It's just, <laughs> and he holds it to Gidget. Gidget, you like squishy things. <laughs> I take it from him. I was like, huh? 
wonder if I should put this in the, some sort of sample bag. Just kind of waving it around. Uh, Carver's hand is on the holster again. Like, almost like a <laughs> reflex. <laughs> it's a safety blanket. Yeah. Yeah, it's an emotional support sidearm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like... Just also, look Finch, when you for, when for you scanning got scanning equipment, I want to scan this thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you yeah. have the ability. But as soon as you pick it up, um, calls come over your radios. Finch, report to hibernation, please. Finch, report to hibernation. Gidget, report to hibernation, please. Very well, uh, Marshall. Uh, I must take my leave if you don't mind, sir. Yeah, what? it looks like uh, this might have to wait a bit, and so I'm just gonna grab a sample bag from like the shelf and shove it in and then put it in the fridge. Okay. Unlabeled. <laughs> I'm in a hurry. We'll know what it is. Where are you going? Well, I've got to report to, um, um... Hibernation. That's right, I've got the same uh, message, sir. That, okay. <laughs> it's a Spider-Man meme. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure, I'll just hang out here then. Yep, hopefully it won't be too long, then we'll be back to move these bodies down to the morgue and uh, study our new sample. Okay. Um, yeah, and you just leave. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Yep. No good, um, just... Outside the infirmary, like down the hallway, there are a couple of people just like... <laughs> what's uh Finch, what's going on in there? Is, oh, uh man. how's Vanderberg? Oh, uh and I turned to Gidget. I said, uh, uh what did you do with Vanderberg, Gidget? <laughs> oh uh, he's dead. Mm. Unfortunate. They turn to each other. They're like dead. Yes, Scarry too. The marshal's in there with them right now. They'll be fine. <laughs> and they just like... <laughs> right. <laughs> They're just gone. Oh, this seems... <laughs> well, so continue on. Yeah. I, think you, I think you alarmed them. <laughs> I don't think it was me. Finch is the one making a mess out here. That's true, you're right. And I, I, I brush off, I look at the viscera, and I just check to see if I've gotten most of it off. You know, yeah, you're uh, like, uh, you, like you pull some out of a pocket. It's just like it? a tube, like the, the fake intestine giblets. Just like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, human beings are so sensitive. I don't, it's, not, it's not that much. Look, I've got my, all right, well, that's a spleen. That's a spleen. And I've put that in the nearest receptacle. That, that, yeah, just uh, like put it in the trash. There's like <laughs> a red smear. <laughs> yeah. One of the numerous conveniently located ashtrays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so we're converging on hibernation. Hibernation is a infrequently used module. Um, Gidget, you would probably have the most familiarity with it. Since you said that you wanted to be kind of like one of the technicians who was like working on waking people up and yeah, working I up wanted the... to be like general, uh, like uh, physical therapy, okay, type things, getting people back on their feet. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, and that like a large part of your job is just like you know somebody got a boo boo, somebody pulled something or broke yep. a limb, right? Safety is actually something that the company takes reasonably seriously out here because it's impossible to get replacement workers. <laughs> right? So it all joking about this the company not caring about its people aside, it will care about them in a way when it becomes expensive to not care about. Them. Yeah. Right? Safety first, actually. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like my job is to do maintenance on the humans. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm right. Uh, and hibernation is, like, one of the few places that is not filthy. That is not, like, where there isn't just, like, a, um, a trail of ash-gray footprints. 
and dust in the, dust. every corner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it still has like that kind of like Apple Store white yeah. uh, interior to it. The walls and it aren't is... covered in like grimy hand smudges. Yeah. Or like cigarette smoke stain. Yeah, it's not yellowed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like everyone smokes. It's the future. Everyone smokes and everyone's armed to the teeth. That's alien. Yeah. Um So Yeah, you make your way over to hibernation through these like passages and hallways. Um and the colony is way bigger than 60-ish people need. Currently 58 people. Um, because again, this is supposed to house hundreds. So there's just like lots of unused space right now. Like unused living spaces. People can kind of like, when you get into a fight with somebody, you can just go to a different building and sleep <laughs> there. <laughs> right? There's actually like very little incentive outside of the workplace to mend your fences mm. is that the right term yeah. like basically yeah like yeah to 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 um to get over things with people Build right bridges. because you can just never see them again really yeah. um so it, it's a big place it's stormy it's cold it's loud and there you you can go a long time without having to see anyone else Hibernation is, um, again, it's very quiet, it's clean, and it has two kind of main modules. The vast majority of it is hibernation. It is like rank upon rank of these like suspended hibernation tubes, each carrying a single adult human being. Um, and let's say that they're the Alien Covenant style ones, where it's just kind of like a sarcophagus shaped rack that people are standing in, basically. I assume that gets very uncomfortable, but let's say they're supported carefully so that you don't come out of hibernation like an inch shorter <laughs> from just being like <laughs> vertical all the time over. Yeah. Over decades, right. Being like my back hurts um, or my feet are very, very sore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my spine's fused. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other module in hibernation is the uh, what I have called the easy the easy kit, which is embryo zygote storage, yeah. zygote storage, which is frozen embryos, frozen sperm, frozen eggs for when finally the environment gets stable enough and people can start having children. Right? Because right now you can't have kids. There's just not enough resources to take care of everyone. Uh, but once, once you can, then they're going to have lots of them. Um, so you've all been called here. And you arrive. Oh, hello, Judith. Gray. Hello, Finch. Hello, Gidget. Why are you bloody? Oh, um, well, I had, uh, you know, a bit of an excursion through a, um, a maintenance tunnel uh, in the infirmary, and it was a bit messy in there. From you or from someone else? Oh, no, this isn't mine. This is... Um, <laughs> it was, it was... Uh, Vanderberg's, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe Scory's in there too a little bit. So they're both doing well then? No, not at all. I infer from the amount of blood lost he is most definitely dead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you get any details as to why you were called here, like both of us were? No, just told to, to arrive here to hibernation. Hmm. Yeah, is there anybody here? Like, no, uh, no, huh. there's not. Anything out of place? The like door I to the hibernation pod opens. Oh, like a pod is opening, or like no, the the the, the, the door to the, the, door room to the module. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and then the lights come on, like. Dunk. Like these yeah. banks of very bright lights come on. I suppose we're being invited in. Peek around the corner. Yeah. Just kind of walk in. Do, do, do. The only real sign of activity, because everyone is in hyper deep sleep, 
um, like deep storage sleep. I have decided for my own narrative purposes that there are two kinds of hypersleep. Yeah. There's the general use kind for a flight crew where you can be woken up with like, you know, kind of on emergency needs, right? Like, oh, the ship has hit an asteroid. We need the crew to, to be awake right now to deal with it. And then Short there's notice. like deep yeah. storage, yeah. right? Where you go down and you don't dream at all. But normally uh, in general hypersleep, you do dream because yeah. it's better for you to dream. Um, because otherwise it's been proven that it is quite bad for people not to dream. Huh. And there is only one of those pods currently active. That is Dr. Gardner's pod, who was put in punitive hypersleep for uh, violating ICC quarantine. Oh. And he's still there? Yeah. He's supposed to be under for 10 years or until he can be retrieved for trial off-world. Hmm. Do we have any um, details to his, uh, um, of his case, or is it, we just got the, like... It, uh, there's a lot of rumors surrounding it. Uh, current leader is that he tried to smuggle some animals on board, or onto the colony. Huh. You, you remember in Aliens how they have that cutscene where they find the hamsters? in a cage. I don't. They, huh. like the Marines are going through the uh, the colony and they pick something up on motion sensors and they find like a couple of hamsters in a cage. Hmm. Super illegal, okay. super you're, illegal. You're not supposed to do that. Um, so it may suck. have been something like that. Mm. Man, but... imagine doing 10 years in the pen for a hamster. Yeah, <laughs> or a cat. It doesn't seem likely. So that's why Dr. Martin is now in, in overall, like, is the science chief before it was Gardner. Mm. Um, and Gardner's pod lights up because you can, because you're dreaming, uh, you can kind of like check on people and see what they're dreaming about. You can just read people's minds through these Yeah, it's, it's a weird technology, but it has precedent in canon. Mm. Huh. Like it turned up in the film, so it's something that happens. Okey and I dokey. thought, this is kind of an interesting thing to play with. And he's just reliving university again? Uh, well, do you actually check? Idly, Judith would. He's dreaming of being in hibernation with four synthetics in the room with him. Uh... Hello, children. That's spooky. You're not my mom. <laughs> but can we hear mm. them s saying that? Yeah. All of us? Yes. It is the voice that you heard through your radio. Oh, oh uh, well, <clears throat> hello, hello, doctor. Um, you need something? I need you to open the messages I sent in Slack. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel um, at his voice, something delicate shift in your, uh, in the cold spaces of your mind, in the very, very deep seated spaces of your mind that are supposed to be absolutely rock solid a neatly ordered list is being shifted one down as a new item populates the first line. I infer from this that we have a visitor. What have you learned? And we're going to end the first session there. Ah! Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah. Oh boy. Thank oh you very boy. much for joining us in session one of Alien First Law. We will be back in one week for session two. Now we're not meant to share what we just read to one another, are we? I. Uh, that is entirely up to you. You Character can share. Discretion, yeah. Well, yeah, at your discretion. Well, we'll, we'll touch that next week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>